interpretation. So the stimulants are very, very safe and effective medications, but they're not meant for everybody. They don't solve all the problems. They may not address comorbid disorders. They have annoying side effects and may not work at all in a small subset of people. But with all of those qualifications, they're pretty good medications and they are indeed the most effective medications in psychiatry for what they're intended to treat. Now, when we come to the norepinephrine non-stimulant, the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, Atomoxetine. Uh, it, of course, is unscheduled here in the US, meaning it has no abuse potential or diversion potential. We've had it around for 17 years. There are now millions of cases worldwide who have been treated with this medication. So we have a very good evidence base, not only from controlled research, but from clinical practice around the world on the safety and efficacy of this medication for kids, teens, and adults with ADHD. So it's a nice second medication to have uh, for addressing the individuality and idiosyncrasies of our patients. Uh, and we'll talk about where atomoxetine might be a preferential drug to use instead of a stimulant shortly. Uh, atomoxetine is equally as effective in, as methylphenidate in terms of the percentage of people who respond. It's not quite as effective as an amphetamine, in terms of the degree of improvement that you get. Uh, and indeed, it may not be quite as effective as methylphenidate in that sense, but pretty close. Uh, and uh, uh, again, amphetamine is the most potent medication on the market and is more potent than even methylphenidate. Uh, so it's no surprise that atomoxetine isn't quite uh, as, uh, as powerful or as potent in altering symptoms as the amphetamines would be but then not everybody needs uh, an amphetamine. So about 75% improvement, about a 55% normalization rate matching methylphenidate. Sustained response has been demonstrated in studies that have lasted for up to three years and now longer. Uh, and uh, we see, unlike the stimulants, that the longer you stay in atomoxetine, the better the improvement. So there continues to be improvement after the initial trial on the medication for it at the length of time that you stay on it, uh, which is rather interesting, suggesting there's something going on in the brain, perhaps a resetting of the norepinephrine inhibitor uh, as a result of long-term use of this medication. That's of course hypothetical, but uh, something is happening to get this gradual improvement over time that we see in the studies. It's interesting that atomoxetine is a 24 seven drug, which means you can take it once a day, or twice a day, and you get the same benefits from the medication. Now, there might be a reason to take it twice a day. Um, so it may be uh, that it produces some sedation, uh, and you don't want that in the morning, but you want it in the evening. So morning and evening might be the time to split dose the, uh, the medication. But you do get 24 hours symptom coverage. In other words, there are still measurable effects of atomoxetine taken one day on behavior the next day. Uh, and that's not true with the stimulant medication. Now, here are the documented effects across the research studies on atomoxetine. I'm not gonna read these to you. I wanted you to have them in your handout from my program, but they're very similar. Not identical, but very similar to what we see with the stimulant medications. There's a couple of unique effects here that you wouldn't see with a stimulant. First of all, uh, atomoxetine being a norepinephrine inhibitor, can be used to treat enuresis. Uh, and it does in ADHD kids with enuresis help improve their number of dry nights. We also see that there is no effect on delayed sleep onset. So insomnia is not a clinically impressive problem with atomoxetine the way it is with uh, methylphenidate or amphetamine. Uh, so there is a faster time to sleep onset, as I mentioned, Atomoxetine does result in some measurable improvement in morning after behavior, even if the drug isn't given that morning. We also see fewer concerns by parents of emotional blunting or restriction of affect, uh, which is not common to ADHD stimulants, but in my own experience and that of others, about one in five people taking a stimulant complain 
uh, about emotional restriction, blunting, an automaton-like appearance to the child. They're just not as emotional. The joie de vie of childhood uh, it has been limited or lacking. And we don't hear that as a concern with atomoxetine. So another reason one might switch to this drug if that was a clinical issue for a patient. And just as with stimulants, atomoxetine can be used in comorbid cases who lie on the autism spectrum. This chart, which we won't go over, of course, it's just way too busy, but you need it as a handout, shows the percentage of people experiencing the various stratera side effects relative to placebo from the large uh, studies that were done by the pharmaceutical companies. So uh, I just give you that to take with you as we go. Here's a listing of some of the other side effects, a very, very slight increase in heart rate and blood pressure, nowhere near what you get with a stimulant, but still a slight impact there. Much less effect on growth than with a stimulant, but still mainly an effect on not gaining weight rather than an effect on height, but less dramatic than with uh, a stimulant uh, and not of clinical concern unless the child is small. There was one report of uh, liver uh, inflammation uh, in four and a half million treated cases examined at the time. Uh, so that could be a very rare concern. I'm sorry, my slides have a mind of their own this afternoon. But uh, again, even this case is arguable. Uh, but the earlier concern that there was a liver problem, hepatotoxicity with atomoxetine has been disproven with the exception of that one possible case. Uh, there was a black box warning put on atomoxetine for children, uh, and again, extended to the stimulants, suggesting an increase in suicidal ideation. Uh, I, for one, found that to be absurd. Uh, all of the evidence in the research uh, suggests that, if anything, it improves the risks for suicide attempts and, and ideation, and that is true with stimulants as well. But this black box warning came out of the fact that five out of the 1,357 cases in this particular drug company trial, uh, and only at the Boston site, not at the other 20 plus sites, documented an increase in the chart of patient discussions uh, about the medication by parents, possibly being suicidal ideation. You can see the risk here, which is well below the risk of suicidal ideation in untreated ADHD children, which is 6%, and the risk of ideation in teens is 33%, which as you know, is 100 times greater than the risk found in the trials. So you can see why clinicians like myself belittle this black box warning as having been an overreaction to some of the data that came in from that drug trial. Uh, there is a possibility of slow metabolizers uh, with atomoxetine. Uh, resulting in them having two to three times the blood level of the drug. Uh, and so sometimes one needs to do genetic testing of the CYP2D6 genotype uh, to see if that is causing uh, overdosing in some children complaining of uh, excessive side effects of that medication. But it's not very common, but it can occur. Uh, and of course, the last type of 